Hey, what's up, my chemistry people? Who is ready for some more electrochemistry? We are going to continue to make qualitative or quantitative predictions about voltaic slash galvanic cells based on half cell reactions and potentials and analyze these cells to identify properties of the underlying redox reactions. So redox, 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 as they apply to voltaic cells. All right, let's break it down. First thing we're gonna do, define what the heck a voltaic or galvanic cell even is. Two, we are going to then identify the anode, cathode, half cells, salt bridge, and voltmeter of a voltaic cell. So what the heck is a voltaic cell? And then let's talk about all the different parts. And there are a lot of them. And then finally, number three. We're gonna explain how the process of oxidation and reduction apply to voltaic cells and where those processes occur. All right, so first thing you need to know is that the transfer or flow of electrons between atoms or ions in a spontaneous redox reaction can be harnessed to produce an electrical current if we separate the oxidation and reduction half reactions into half cells. When we do that, we create what's called a voltaic, also known as galvanic cell. Throughout this video, you're gonna see in the background a voltaic cell that I have created between zinc and copper and solutions of those metal ions. Now, if I place some zinc into some copper nitrate solution directly, we'll get the redox reaction to happen. But there's no way for me to harness those electrons as they're transferred from the zinc to the copper. Ooh, that's so cool. So what we do is we create what are called two half cells. We separate the oxidation half reaction from the reduction half reaction. But you've still got a substance that'll readily lose electrons and a substance that'll readily pick those electrons up. And by separating those two half reactions, we're able to harness that electron flow by having those electrons flow through a wire along with some ion flow through a solution creates an electrical circuit which we can use to power our lives. Quick note here as we talk about electrical current, current is the number of electrons that flow through the system per second and we measure electrical current in amps. And an amp is defined as a coulomb of charge flowing per second or 6.242 times 10 to the 18 electrons per second. Not something that you have to memorize. Important to know that voltaic cells are also known as galvanic cells and these two terms can be used interchangeably. And if you've set up your voltaic cell correctly, you should have a spontaneous or thermodynamically favored reaction with a positive cell potential. Okay, so let's talk nitty gritty. Defining voltaic cell. Spontaneous redox reaction in which we've separated the half reactions. Connected them with a the wire, there's some ion flow, so we get an electrical current. Spontaneous. Now, let's break down the different parts of a voltaic cell. The anode is the electrode or metal conductor where oxidation occurs. In the voltaic cell on your screen, the zinc metal is the anode. It is being oxidized to form zinc ion. Couple things to know about the anode. Anions from our salt bridge, which we'll talk about in a minute, are attracted to the anode. And as it is oxidized, it loses mass. Again, that solid zinc is being oxidized into zinc ion and sort of plopping into solution. Couple of important mnemonic devices here. Anox, anode is oxidized, and anorexic anode, because the anode will lose mass as the reaction progresses. Important side note, anorexia is a serious disease. And if you or someone you know suffers from anorexia, reach out, there is help available. Anox. The cathode is the electrode or metal conductor where reduction occurs. So in this voltaic cell, copper represents my cathode. Things to know about the cathode. Cations from the salt bridge are attracted to the cathode. It will also gain mass as the redox reaction occurs. The reason why it's gaining mass is because as electrons flow from the anode to the cathode, the copper ions that are in solution pick those electrons up and plate out onto the cathode, increasing its mass. Some important mnemonic devices here. Red cat for reduction occurs at the cathode. Red cat, reduction occurs at the cathode. And fat cat, the cathode gets fat. Fat cat, the cathode gets fat. Gains mass as the reaction proceeds. Looks like this cat has been 
reduced for quite some time. Now, the salt bridge is a really important part of the voltaic cell. It's required to complete the circuit and maintain charge balance. The salt bridge, as you look at your voltaic cell on your screen, is this thing here. Often, we take a highly soluble salt, like potassium nitrate, dissolve it in water and fill our salt bridge with it. Here's why that's so important. As zinc is oxidized, zinc ions plop out into solution, which creates a buildup of positive charge. If nitrate ions from our salt bridge didn't enter the oxidation half cell to neutralize that buildup of charge, the reaction would stop. Why would another positive two zinc want to join another positive two zinc in solution? Positive charges repel one another. So the anions in the salt bridge navigate towards the anode to neutralize that buildup of charge. Similarly, in the cathode, as the positive copper ions plate out onto the cathode, there's a buildup of negative charge in solution. So now our cations from our salt bridge move into the reduction half cell to help balance that charge. Without your salt bridge, you can't have a voltaic cell. Current will stop flowing. Electrons will stop flowing, your current will drop to zero. Now, we'll often place a voltmeter Boom, to measure the overall reaction or cell potential. For a correctly constructed voltaic cell, your voltage is always going to be positive. Because remember, a positive cell potential indicates a spontaneous reaction. And voltaic cells are spontaneous or thermodynamically favored redox reactions. Last note here, in a redox reaction, your electrons are going to flow from the anode, the thing being oxidized or losing electrons, to the cathode, the thing that's being reduced or gaining electrons. So another great mnemonic, fat cat, again, to help you remember some important things about voltaic cells. Electrons will flow from the anode to the cathode. Fat cat. Electrons have been flowing way too long for this guy. Now, there's a great image in your notes that illustrates about a voltaic cell. Everything that I've just talked about. Take a moment, stare at that image. And then lastly, just a couple of quick notes. Recognize that voltaic cells can also be constructed in which the underlying reaction involves a gas or the oxidation reduction is from an ion to another ion. Now, this differs from a typical voltaic cell in which the reduction is from ion to solid and the oxidation is from solid to ion. Don't panic. All that, that means is what you're gonna see are inert electrodes, such as platinum or graphite. The electrode itself doesn't take part in the reaction, but is used as a surface for which the electrons can be transferred. So as you take a look at the example that's in your notes, here we've got a voltaic cell constructed with solid lead but the other component of that cell is a gas. We have an inert platinum electrode, simply so the electrons can transfer, but the rest of what we just talked about when it comes to, volta when it comes to voltaic cells applies. Another great example of something that differs slightly from your typical voltaic cell setup is when you have an ion to ion reduction. So in this example, we go from the permanganate ion to the manganese two plus. Once again, our cathode is an inert material. All right, and that does it for voltaic cells. Have a fantastic day.